Did you know at Kroger, shopping online with pickup and delivery is the same as shopping in-store? Same low prices, same personalized deals, same rewards, with no hidden fees or markups on your same family favorites, like Honeycrisp apples and pasta sauce. The only difference is you don't have to put on shoes. Start your cart today at Kroger.com. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations. Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Hockey fans, are you ready to Brave the Wild? With me, your host, Feraldino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Brave the Wild is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, PodMN, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Audible, Stitcher, Double Twist, and I'm sure there's others. Great to be back on board with you once again today. It's a great pleasure to have you downloading and listening. Can't thank you enough. The Minnesota Wild this past week. Managed to play, well, three out of four games. It was going to be four games. We played three and went one and two, ultimately, down the stretch. We've definitely seen worse, and we've certainly seen better. But, well, Minnesota Wild played very well in the Shark Tank. Five to two victory, and then a two to one loss in L.A. Jonathan Quick is back. So again, I apologize to Jonathan Quick or Jonathan Quick fans out there that just might happen to be listening. Uh, he's back. He's back to being Jonathan Quick again. Looked really damn good. Nice little renaissance for him. And then a back-to-back, <laughs> or back-and-forth, pardon me, Game 7-like uh, <laughs> situation in Las Vegas. Wild ended up losing 6-4 to four on an empty netter. What a back-and-forth type of game that was. There's definitely a, a big rivalry with Vegas now after we played each other all those times last year and had a seven-game series. It's going to happen. Max Pacioretty already definitely a killer in that one. But Kevin Fiala finally ended his goal drought versus the San Jose Sharks. Really, really cool. Uh, was able to basically get a rebound off of a John Merrill shot uh, from DeHame. John Merrill putting the puck on net. And then Kevin Fiala finally burying his fourth goal of the season. Multiple players had multiple points. Jewel Erksonek, Kirill Kaprizov also getting a goal later on. That was, of course, an empty netter, if I remember correctly. Yes, it was an, it was an empty netter for Kirill Kaprizov, his 10th of the season. Brandon DeHame, I thought, had a really nice week uh, at the end of the day. Really impressed with uh, his just everything, just kind of his skating, his uh, stick handling. He must have heard me when I was saying he was kind of quiet last week and ended up actually getting a very gentle James Shepard Memorial Went up with a couple of points, and they were both not bad at all. As I said, really liked Brandon DeHame during the course of this week. The fourth line played absolutely fantastic. Don't break them up. Uh, Sturm, DeHame, and of course, Nick Bukestad, obviously, again. And he's had some nice games throughout the course of this week. A nice, really pretty goal later on in the upcoming games here. Uh, really impressed with what he brought. Jordan Greenway's been very good, definitely. And of course, that big... Second, third line, second line. It's a second line. It's like a third line. It's a second line. It is what it is. It's a middle line. We'll just call it a middle line with a lot of strength, a lot of ability. They just get the job done, don't they? Uh, even been featured this past week on NHL Network. They just, they're, they're getting good. Uh, obviously, they're, uh, they're playing great together. Jewel Erickson, Jordan Greenway, and Marcus Foligno, who's just continuing to put up career highs. Yeah, uh, he's just been absolutely fantastic. Never really saw him to be this type of a scorer, and he's becoming that, obviously. Uh, and Drew Larchinek just keeps getting better. Like I said, multi-point game for him, and multi-goal game for Jordan Greenway. Really impressed with what he's been doing at the end of the day. Uh, again, Ryan Hartman continues to play well. Didn't stand out as much this week or anything. Neither did Kaprizov. 
uh, or Zuccarillo, but they were still around. They, they, both, they all had at least two points this past week. But again, you know, <laughs> the team's playing well, but unfortunately a couple of hiccups here with the uh, Los Angeles Kings. It just wasn't their night, and you're not going to play great hockey every single day. It's impossible to do. Uh, heck, look at, uh, didn't the Wild beat the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning the year the Lightning had a near historical type season with their record and then ended up getting you know swept in the first round by the Columbus Blue Jackets that was pretty ridiculous um, yeah I mean the Wild beat them and you know and of course again it, the President's Trophy further and further proof it doesn't mean a whole lot so do the best you can have a nice you know playoff seating you don't have to get the President's Trophy it doesn't always end up well when you when you win the President's Trophy in fact oftentimes it doesn't. Teams like the 89 Calgary Flames and, the, you know, some of the Oilers teams and such. Okay, but a lot of times it just doesn't wind up that way, unfortunately. Uh, Tomas Hurdle, is he, uh, is, is he auditioning for Minnesota later? We'll see. Nice game for him. He had a goal later on, and uh, later on it was a good one. A goal and an assist. Jonathan Dolan hitting the puck on net and scoring as well. Yep, Eric Carlson's been having a nice season in San Jose, I'd have to say. But uh, let's jump around a little bit here. Again, Fiala finally ending the drought. We're really happy about that. That was on the rebound. Uh, it wasn't a great game, necessarily, uh, or it wasn't a great week, but that was a very good game in San Jose. Uh, unfortunately, again, the Carolina game was postponed as a number of players for the Carolina Hurricanes. I uh, have this COVID outbreak situation going on. I, I'm just going to, you know, I do think a lot of this is an overreaction, but it is what it is. That's just my opinion. That's the way I see the world. You, you don't have to agree with me. We don't have to hate each other. You don't have to unsubscribe to the show just because I don't see it exactly the way you do, and I'm not going to unsubscribe to, to your show or other people's shows out there because I don't see it the way they do. Unless they literally like start calling your names and going off on you, then go ahead and unsubscribe. But I'm not doing that, am I? <laughs> but yes, Carolina game postponed. Uh, Calgary Flames. You know, obviously the, uh, they, they've been going through some things as well. Unfortunately, damn, you know, it's like, like teams I like to watch and such, you end up missing out on them. It's fun to watch Carolina, and obviously it would have been a great game, a nice little gauge to see how we are and such, playing against a good team like that from the Eastern Conference, which we don't see very often. In fact, we haven't seen Carolina in quite a while. We haven't seen a lot of teams in quite a while, <laughs> so because of last year's big old bubble. But that's, you know, that's the way it was. I was happy to have a season last year. Thank God for that, to be quite honest. Let's uh, gradually move on. Uh, one piece of news, again, uh, Merit Huznadinov. I've signed with SKA. That's who he's with right now in the KHL, and he's doing all right 20, uh, through 2024, through 2024, unfortunately. So it was according to rumors. Now it's it's for sure. Obviously, it was starting to build up. I was hearing from Derek early. He was the first person to bring it to me. He said he's been hearing rumors, you know, and seeing rumors and such floating around the Internet and all that, and then wound up, uh, you know, Michael Russo and saying how wild fans have to be disappointed. A little bit, but luckily he's, he's young enough, him being married, who's Nadinov, and he's, you know, when he comes back, he's not going to be very old, like 2021, like, like 21, 22. So it's not the end of the world. Hopefully, uh, who's Nadinov will be in the AHL, if not the National Hockey League by that point. Probably the NHL is my guess, if he continues to develop the way he has been. And being the fact that the KHL is, you know, it, it is a professional league. It's not like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not juniors, it's not the OHL. So. That's the thing. Who's he will probably be in the National Hockey League when he comes. So we don't have to panic all too much. Uh, Bill Guerin was named to the U.S. Olympic. Uh, well, he was officially named the new uh, U.S. Olympic GM. As the previous one was obviously no more with what was going on with Chicago and such. Unfortunately, Bill Guerin was the assistant general manager. You, you kind of knew he was going to get that job. You just kind of could feel it coming, and it did. Uh, lots of debate back and forth about NHL players going to the Olympics and all the strict conversation, uh, strict uh, COVID protocols over there. I mean, you think it's strict when in certain places. It's really strict over there, and it's just kind of crazy. Um, we'll talk about that when the question's brought up on the Twitter account. But at the same time, I, am I for NHL players going over there? Not really. I'm not a huge fan, even though, I mean, hey, if they really, really, really want to, good for them. And if they don't, then I say good for them, too. Uh, obviously, <laughs> it can affect things. It, it can, and it's a bummer. But luckily, it'll affect everybody, I suppose, in the NHL. It won't be just the Wild. But, you know, when you're playing well and you have a good, you have th good things going, you don't want it to end. But 
you don't want it to get like you know put on ice so to speak but i think the wild there's a pretty good chance they are a first second third place team in the division like a very strong third if not a second uh, or first place team probably second or first place team in the uh, the central at the moment they probably are but again at the end of the day what i care about most is may and june i want cups i want cups i want cups i don't want to just say yay we got 112 points and got beaten the first or second round by St. Louis or Colorado or, you know, whoever, <laughs> or, or swept in the conference final by, you know, Vegas or something. Like Vegas finally gets past the conference final uh, plateau, which they've been running into for multiple years now. So that's how that goes. Speaking of plateauing and hitting a wall and all that, that's what it was like in Los Angeles, is a segue to the Los Angeles Kings. They do have a winning record, despite the fact they're sixth place in the Pacific. So the Pacific isn't as weak as some people have been saying. Certainly. Uh, <laughs> it's a decent team. It's not that good. They're not that good, though. It just felt like a sluggish, sluggish game. And then you had a funny part with Brendan Lemieux scoring the goal later in the game that ended up putting the Kings ahead and ultimately the game winner. Marcus Foligno did score the goal that the Wild had, the only goal the Wild had. Kevin Fiala did get the assist. Foligno able to get the uh, to, to put the puck in the net, which felt good. Finally, somebody got past Jonathan Quick, who was dominant all night. Uh, Brendan Lemieux scores, and then Marcus Foligno squirts him with the water bottles. He's skating by the Minnesota Wild bench, which was really annoying. You know, I, I can imagine the uh, irritation. A guy who isn't all that great, and he's an agitator, and he's a jackass. Uh, the quote by Marcus Foligno was, he scores one goal and then comes by our bench and thinks he's Sidney Crosby out there. So, yeah, obviously he's pretty annoyed. And go uh, go Marcus Foligno for scoring Brendan Lemieux. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of annoying, you know. So I don't blame anybody for being annoyed with that. Mason Shaw was able to escape for the Wild again, which has been great. Uh, nice to see him out there, unfortunately, unable to register a point in the games he's played. He's now back with the AHL's Iowa Wild. Definitely a frustrating night. Just nothing was going, and again, Jonathan Quick was super sharp, to be quite fair. The Wild did muster 31 shots on that. Not every shot was great, but of course, again, the Wild did put some pressure on Jonathan Quick, and he was freaking awesome the whole night. And you know what else? Or, I mean, you know who else was freaking awesome in the game? It was Cabo Kakinen. Sure, it was annoying and irritating seeing Brendan Lemieux score, but it's he gave up two goals and 37 shots. I thought Capo Kakinen made a ton of saves in the game. And again, like we said, the Wild were relatively sluggish. This made, might have been a 4 one game if Capo Kakinen wasn't on his game. And I thought he was throughout the entire night. Been quite impressed with Capo Kakinen the past few games. His goals against average for the season isn't all spectacular, but just, you know, but that's because he had a horrible start to the season to be quite fair. And two games so far in December, I know you might think, so what, it's just two freaking games. Well, two two goals allowed, basically. Two goals allowed uh, per game, pardon me. Two goals per game. He's, he's 500. One win, one loss. Save percentage of 94. In November, in four games, Cabo Kakinen was 3-0 and with an overtime loss. I believe that was the shootout. That was a shootout game, if I remember correctly. Uh, two, two, 250 goals against average, and save percentage just over 90. That's not the best. And, of course, uh, in October, it was a bit of a bad start to the season. But he had a couple of icky games at the beginning. But generally speaking, Cabo Kakinen has been pretty damn good. And I, I think he's a more than legitimate backup goalie for the Minnesota Wild going forward. If not a spot, uh, obviously a platoon. As Jasper Wallstead, Jesper Wallstead gets brought into Minnesota, he's going to World Juniors. So that's going to be fun. We all look forward to that. Uh, Jesper Wallstead, some people, you know, it, it could go any direction with him with goalies. Capo Kakinen obviously took a while to get here, but he was good everywhere he went. Kakinen was good everywhere he went. He was never, it was never like, ah, uh, oof, boy. Uh, <laughs> wow, he made it? Holy crap, he made it. No, he was actually good everywhere he went, but again, it's just a, yeah, it's gradual. I think the Wild handled Cabo Kakinen pretty well, to be quite frank, and that's why he's more than likely a guy who should stick in the National Hockey League for quite a while. Remember last season, he was 16-8. and eight. Goals against the average wasn't all that it didn't jump out at you like, holy crap, but remember he had that incredible stretch that uh, was up there with Devin Dubnik for a while there. That was awesome. Uh, that winning streak and great numbers and such along the way. Kyle Pukakinen was definitely the best player on the ice for Minnesota versus the LA Kings. It's just, it's just a fact for me. And I think the other goalie on the other side was the best player for the LA Kings. It was a goalie duo. Duel. It was a goalie duel or, you know, like a pitcher's duel. It was a goalie duel in this one. 
It looks like Anaheim's tied the Wild, but of course, three games in hand. Remember how we always used to have that excuse, so to speak, in the past? Don't we? Well, we, well, we have games in hand, so we should hopefully have a shot at the playoffs. I believe that was the year Yo ultimately got fired, and uh, Torchetti took over. One thing that does kind of suck, we have three games in hand over uh, Anaheim, one game in hand versus uh, St. Louis. Guess who's got two games in hand versus us, and there's only three points behind? Guess who... It ain't Woody Woodpecker. It's uh, the Colorado Avalanche. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, well, okay. It's going to get a little tighter. And welcome to the National Hockey League. It's going to get tighter. So, get ready, eh? And watch out for the Vancouver Canucks with Bruce Boudreaux. Maybe they're going to have the number one seed. Oh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Still windy out there. Obviously, we went through some interesting weather. Now we're back to what winter is supposed to be like 20 degrees and snow coming down, which looks nice. It's the nice, dry, crisp snow. It's not the wet, mushy crap, and it's not clinkety, clinkety ice either. That's, like, really bad. Vegas Golden Knights. Nice Sunday night evening game when there's no Viking game. Absolutely great. Unless you would prefer to watch the Bears and the Packers, It was a, which I would hope most hockey fans, maybe you'd have that on in the background for curiosity because it's the oldest rivalry in the NFL. The newest rivalry in the NHL is the Minnesota Wild and the Vegas Golden Knights. It's a beauty. It's a beauty. Uh, Matt Zuccarello, I love that hustle he had with his goal. Obviously getting a rebound and putting the puck in net just before time expired at the end of the first period. That was an awesome goal. 2-2 two two at that stage. Zach Whitecloud's been getting on a lot of people's nerves, and he was able to score a couple goals in this game, almost had a hat trick. The Goligoski goal was awesome. Uh, but it wasn't just, it wasn't the goal necessarily that was as awesome as the, the pass and the play set up by uh, Brennan DeHame. Obviously, Spurgeon got the puck to DeHame, and then DeHame kind of stick-handled and skated and just had that hesitation and the patience and the wherewithal and released the puck just in the right time, right place for Goligoski. To one time that sucker in the net. That was a beauty. It was a it was a great play. Uh, it was an absolutely great play, and love what Brendan DeHame did during the course of this week. Yeah, the fourth line was scored on multiple times in this game, but well, bleep happens when you give up six goals, or should we say five, when it's you know two uh, goalies in the net. There was the uh, empty netter, which kind of is what it is. Alex Pierangelo was basically was a full court shot. <laughs> I'm just using a basketball term, but yeah, it was so far. It was behind the it was behind the, the goal line in uh, in, the, in the Vegas zone all the way to the empty net. Absolutely beautiful shot, to be quite fair. But there are wild killers all over this Vegas club. Cam Talbot was okay in the game. He got beat. Uh, he just got beat, and Vegas was just better, unfortunately, in this game. Wild mustered 27 shots on net against Roman Leonard. Four goals, which was great. Max Pastoretti was a killer. Just an absolute murderer out there. And he grabbed... Uh, Kulikov on his goal, kind of like showing him up a little bit. That wasn't the, the greatest thing ever, but I suppose. Uh, Mark Stone, my God, absolute wild killer, and he's just he's just a killer in general. Uh, his passing skills are just amazing. Uh, the the goal he had was a quick kind of release on a on a rebound, and I saw uh, just a good rebound for Mark Stone and, and put it in. <laughs> but the passing and uh, he parks in front of the net the way he does. And his, his overall passing skills, sometimes behind the net, sometimes in front of the net, whatever he does. He's definitely my favorite player on the Vegas Golden Knights. And, man, <laughs> the guy who he reminds me of is Kirill Kaprizov, or who Kirill Kaprizov reminds me of is Mark Stone. How people would compare him to Patrick Kane, him being Kaprizov. I occasionally have compared him to Mark Stone. I, I can see the comparisons, obviously. Definitely goal-scoring ability, which is more, uh, which is absolutely there. Obviously, you might see the Patrick Kane in the goal scoring ability with the release on the shot that Kaprizov has and the, and the incredible skating, but the great passing skills that Kaprizov has, you know, as, as a winger, uh, is similar to Mark Stone. Uh, that's where I see some similarities. So obviously a great, a great deal. And there's a reason why Vegas stunk at the beginning of the season when you had no Pacioretty or uh, Mark Stone. Now that they're there, they're looking more and more like a Western Conference champion type club. They could win the Western Conference. They absolutely can. And Jack Eichel's still coming. Don't forget that part. <laughs> Jack Eichel's coming. Yep. That's the unfortunate reality for all of us. Rem Pitlick, though, uh, obviously was scratched over and over and over this week, which is a little disappointing. You feel kind of bad, but... Uh, shoot. You know, it kind of is what it is, I suppose. I would love to see Rem Pitlick out there. Uh, Jonas Brodeen being out certainly did not help. That was a big hurt. 
I would have to say versus the biggest Golden Knights, I think he would have made a difference in that game. I don't think there's any question. But uh, the good news is Jonas Burdine was ready to play for the Carolina game. He was back. So luckily it was a quick it was a quick injury. It didn't last too long. Uh, obviously he was out for the LA Kings game as well. That might have helped maybe, uh, generally speaking. But again, luckily it wasn't too, too serious. He was back ready to play for Carolina. And then you just knew it. You just knew it when you saw reports of Carolina's only got like eight skaters. It's over. Damn it. Anyway, you know. They only have like like 11 skaters, if I said that correctly. So that's like, yeah, they're going to freaking postpone it. And, well, I look forward to the game when it comes, when it's rescheduled at the end of the day. Unless it already has been. And if it has, I apologize for my ignorance. There's nothing there. It's just blank. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Well, okay, there's still the April 2nd game. And it's not been rescheduled. We'll see. It'll pop up one of these days, I guess. I look forward to it. Uh, that's a nice gauge because Carolina is one of the best teams in the East, and heck, you know they've been a Stanley Cup contender the last two, three years. So they're the they're the bunch of jerks. Yeah, <laughs> it's a funny name, but you have everything. Uh, what what are we? The cardiac kids is is, is that what we uh, call the Minnesota Wild here in Minnesota? I believe so. Marcus Foligno's not a kid, but he's definitely a cardiac. My God, and 13 goals in the season. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Marcus Foligno, just awesome. Again, he was good in the Vegas game. Big goal, big time goal to tie the game up. The kind of goal where you could have your face sliced up with skates and sticks and that kind of goal. You know, one of those where you're in front of the net and there's sticks and skates flying all over the place. I was surprised. <laughs> I was I was worried there was going to be like a interference or something. It was one of those type of goals where there's a million people in front of the net. But well, that's what kind of line that is, and that's Marcus Foligno, and and he is awesome, isn't he? Nick Bustad, again, ah, great, great play. He got, he, he got to be one-on-one -on -one with uh, Robin Leonard, and he didn't disappoint. It was a great shot. Really appreciated that. That's what made it 3-2 to two and had us feeling wild well, we're going to win the game. I know I'm kind of bouncing all over, but that's what kind of game it was. You don't need to do everything in exact order, and this happened then, and that happened this, and this, and that. But the Wild had a two-man advantage in this game. That was one of the major disappointments. In a game that was, again, close, and it was back and forth, and it felt like a Game 7 of the first round or second round of the postseason. It didn't feel like a conference final or anything, but something like that. It, it felt like a game in May, uh, a, a seventh game, a sixth game, where it, it's history-making, and people talk about it years from now. It was one of those type of playoff games. That's what it felt like, and ended up being just a regular season game, but a damn good one. This is a rivalry that's going to hang around for years, and I think Minnesota is going to have a lot of fun with this one. Why not? Why the hell not? Uh, we had this with Vancouver. We had this with Colorado. I think we still have it with Colorado, but it hasn't been as dramatic lately. Seems like with Colorado, it's usually one-sided. Like, the Wild come out, you know, guns a-blazing, or in other cases, Colorado comes out guns, guns a-blazing, and it's like a multi-goal game, unfortunately. Yeah, we don't get a whole lot of these with Colorado. Maybe we'll have one coming up soon, though. It's, uh, don't be surprised if Minnesota and Colorado face off in the postseason at some point. I definitely got to say the surprise team of the year has got to be the Anaheim Ducks, though. Anaheim Ducks? Really? Yeah, the Anaheim Ducks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vancouver's going to be a surprise team the way they're heading. Congratulations, Isha, Isha Jerome. Obviously, Vancouver. <laughs> From the Vancouver Island there. Yeah, they're doing damn good. So, uh, <clears throat> this was a great game. It was a spectacle. It was so much fun to watch. And I have nothing to complain about uh, it other than the fact we lost and, of course, couldn't score on a two-man advantage. That was freaking frustrating. That's the fr that's the frustrating part is coming out with a loss. But i got to think the Wild are going to get some games versus Vegas this year. Maybe it'll be 2-2 two to two at the end of the day. With that said, let's pass out the awards for this week. The Mike McDonald Award was tough because a lot of guys played well. And it's nice to see Greenway playing so well. I, I think it's got to be. Should I do it? Should I just go with it? Is, is it? is it lame? Should I go with the line of, you know, the, the Eckfellino Greenway line? Because I want to give it. It's got to be one of those three guys, right? It, it has to be. Uh, love the fourth line as well. I mean, but this, this is not the third line technically. It, no, and it really isn't when you consider who Fiala is playing with on the third line. <laughs> this is the second line. I'm going to give it to the second line of uh, Eck, Foligno, 
in Greenway. The uh, the tough geek line. <laughs> the bully line. I don't know. The bully line? Should we change it from the geek line to the bully line? Oh, there's the geek and the bully. Let's call it the bully line, I guess. The geeky bull. Okay, the bully line. Yeah, there's no more Luke Cunning. Uh, Drew Larson, I guess you could say he's a geek. I guess he was on that line before when it was what Cunning uh, with Eck and Greenway in the past. But it is what it is. <laughs> but Cunning wasn't that big of a geek necessarily. <laughs> he, he, he played his ass off. Um, but yeah, that's going to be our Madonna Award. The James Shepard Memorial, I guess it's Jordy Ben. I guess he didn't have a very good week. And it's easy to say he's the weakest player on the roster at the moment. And I'm sorry, Jordy. I'm not trying to pick on you. He, he didn't have a particularly good week. And looking forward to Jonas Verdeen returning, and he will be. I got to think he's going to be the one that's, uh, he's going to be the odd man out of that group. He wasn't at first when Dumba went out <clears throat> for a game because he was playing well, but Jordy did not have a good week. Uh, Rem Pitlick, got to see him back out there again soon. I got to think, is it going to be Rask? Going back out again. This Rask has been playing well. Even though he doesn't put up great numbers, he has been playing well, to be quite fair. One thing I'm extremely impressed with in the Vegas game, that it's like you don't really realize it until you see it, and you can't believe it. Nick Bukestad, seven wins, 7-1 uh, to one in the faceoff circle. That's awesome. That's an awesome performance by Bukestad in the faceoff circle. But, uh, yes, uh, so the Madonna Award will be the bully geek line, we'll call it. <laughs> the Bully Geek Line, and the uh, James Shepard Memorial will go to Mr. Uh, Jordy Ben. With that, we'll take a quick break, and we've got three games to preview yet again. floating around out there. I love those flurries. I love flurries. And you got the Chris, I, I turned the Christmas tree on uh, before the show. I was going to turn it on. I was thinking about it. I turned it on. It's it's just a nice touch. Love seeing those flurries floating around out there. And you got the 1971 World Series on in the background. What do you think of that? Normally I have NHL Network on when I'm doing the show. I mean, that's common sense unless there's a replay of a wild game playing. But yeah, I mean, 1971 World Series, I have to check that out. I mean, it's <laughs> it's only 50 years ago. I mean, why not check it out? It's kind of cool, and, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm babbling. I apologize. Oh, who's the first game? It will be the Buffalo Sabres. Buffalo Sabres. Finally get to play Buffalo again. And will we have another trap loss type of game against this club? We've struggled at times versus Buffalo. But, again, that's a totally different team. You know, there's no more... Yeah, there's no more you-know-who. You just fill in the blank. All those names. Dubnik all the way. Uh, Malcolm Subban, that's where he is now. He's been all over the league. He's one of the backup goalies for the uh, Buffalo Sabres. Casey Middlestat, upper body injury as of the, t the 7th of December. Get better, Casey. Yeah, Casey Middlestat, former gopher. And where is he from? Uh, Eden Prairie. So, hell of a player in high school. Wasn't on the Gophers long enough, damn it. <laughs> one bleeping season. You know, damn it, damn it, damn it. I, I keep bringing that up. That, that was a mistake. Just one more year, Casey. He would have dominated college hockey, and the Gophers would have been better, and he would have had a... It would have been a better path to the NHL, in my humble opinion, instead of just, okay, I'm done. NHL, let's go. And it was like, uh... Mm, you know, he's kind of struggled since then, unfortunately. He's finally picked it up a little bit, this year. A little bit. At least I thought he had. No, no, he isn't. That was last year. He actually was picking it up a little bit. This year, only four games so far in the NHL. Yeah, he, it was a goal, though. He scored a goal. Mark Jan Jankowski, former Calgary Flame, <laughs> way at the bottom there, unfortunately. Victor Olofsson's got 17 points. Former Minnesota, and obviously there's Minnesota ties. Minnesota Wild or Minnesota ties all over Buffalo and the New York Islanders. So it's all the time with those two teams. As the Wild made a lot of trades with Buffalo, for whatever reason, we lost all of them pretty much, though. The Felino trade's looking a little prettier than it uh, did a few years ago, which uh, at the time helped get Chuck Fletcher fired. Just one of the uh, nails in the coffin, so they say. 
Kyle Oposo is leading the club in scoring at the moment. 13 uh, assists to lead the way. 19 total points and 6 goals. Tage Thompson, double T, I guess you could call him, with 10 goals for the <laughs> Buffalo Sabres. Jeff Skinner is finally getting back, rolling again. He'd been struggling for a while, and I guess a lot of guys have struggled in Buffalo, but they got some nice pieces, some nice futures, as they call them, in return. Ending into Buffalo. Their goaltender, well, at least one of them is Craig Anderson. I guess he's the backup. Pardon me. He's the backup. Their main goaltender is Dustin Tokarski. Dustin Tokarski, whose goals against average is over three. Save percentage, luckily for him, is still above 90, but barely above 90. Craig Anderson's actually been damn good, and he's what? He's my age. Isn't he like 42? 42, right? So that's, that's freaking crazy. Uh, strange, strange, <laughs> strange. Yeah, but hey, sometimes goalies last forever. Aaron Dell, the former San Jose Sharks reject, and I'm sorry, Aaron, but the numbers aren't good. doesn't look good. 4.52 goals against average, 87 save percentage. I'm thinking he's in the minors at the moment, and Supan's hurt, obviously, and he's been kind of up and down. He was good with Vegas with Supan, but ever since he got traded away from Vegas, it hasn't been good, unfortunately. Uh, Malcolm Supan, that's when the uh, uh, Vegas Golden Knights uh, originally acquired Robin Leonard. He was the backup to Crawford in Chicago before. Yes, sir. Buffalo, uh, yeah, they're just they're what they are. They're they're not in last place though. Montreal is. They're not they're not in last place. They're nineteen or nine and fifteen. Pardon me, with only twenty two points, so they're still not good or anything. Eight points behind the next team, which would be the Boston Bruins, and twenty points behind first place Toronto. And just behind who who are and then the two teams that are just behind Toronto, breathing down their neck, the Florida clubs, Florida and Tampa. Yeah, okay. Not that you need to know that this second, though. Of course, we are playing Florida again. Buffalo's 20th in goals, 29th in goals against, 13th in the power play, 18th in the penalty kill, and they get a decent amount of penalty minutes. They're 6th in the league in penalty minutes. Yeah, or actually, they're 6th in the league in terms of they're the 6th least. I apologize. I'm saying that wrong. They're a little more disciplined, so good for them, generally speaking. The wild power play is 23rd, and penalty kill is 13th. I'm stunned. Considering how awful the Wild penalty kill was at the beginning of the year, the Wild have definitely rebounded in a big way in that department. Minnesota's leading in most categories except the penalty <laughs> penalty, uh, excuse me, penalty minutes and power play. Buffalo's 13th on the power play. Wrap your head around that. <clears throat> shooting percentage is dominated by guys like Marcus Foligno, you know, and such, who are just, you know, his shooting percentage is off the charts. Ryan Hartman, guys like that, are what have the Wild shooting percentages number two in the National Hockey League. We'll play the Buffalo Sabres again on March the 4th. <clears throat> I feel sorry for the city of Buffalo. I mean, they look so damn... The Buffalo Bills were so promising coming into the season, and now they're, they're just done. They're done. They're probably not even going to make the playoffs. What do you think of that? And it's not because guys got hurt. Buffalo Sabres have suffered for a, quite a while. I love the logo. I'm glad they went to this, and they got rid of that rebrand crap that stuff popped up in the late 90s, even though they, the sad truth is that was when they were super good, and they went to the cup final only to lose to Dallas on a questionable goal by Brett Hull. But let's go back where we need to be. The Wilds should be able to beat the Buffalo Sabres. In fact, if we don't, it's freaking disappointing, right? Wouldn't that be disappointing? This is in the XL Energy Center, and this is tonight. Freaking hockey again, thank God. You know, it's it's been a, it's been a few days. It's what, so Sunday night? It's Thursday already. So that's what happens when you have a canceled or uh, postponed game and such. So uh, all of us with a little hockey withdrawal will get a release tonight, and hopefully Minnesota releases the Kraken tonight. Okay, pardon me. <laughs> the uh, Minnesota Wild will beat the Buffalo Sabres 4-2, to in my opinion. Most likely guy to score. Let's go Kevin Fiala, goal number 5. Kevin Fiala, come on. Consistency now. Consistency, Kevin. Obviously, he's been there the whole time. He's been there the whole time. He's been playing great. You know, he hit the post in uh, Vegas. I believe he's second in the league in posts hit, from what I've heard. Obviously, that changes and fluctuates. Fluctuates, pardon me. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's been snake bit with the post and all that. It's just really rotten luck, uh, I'd have to say. Though, well, don't hit the damn post. Just get it in. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Fifth goal of the year, though. Minnesota beats Buffalo 4-2. to two. Sorry, I'm really babbling here. Dragging this a little bit here. Now I'm bumping. It's not moving. Oh, God, I don't need computers freezing again. Oh, I've had that happen. I've had everything happen 
while doing podcasts. It's everything. Everything. Yeah, blue screen to death. Oh, God. Florida Panthers. Serg, Sergey Bob. Sergey Bob. Sergey Bob. Yep, 2.37 goals against average. Much better than last year. Even though Florida was good last year. They were damn good. Ultimately lost in the postseason just because it was a it was an unfortunate matchup for them. Spencer Knight, sl, you know, slow out of the gate because goalies take a while. I'm surprised he's in the I'm surprised he's in the NHL that fast. But you never know. Huberdeau's leading the club in scoring with 10 goals and 32 overall points. Sam Reinhardt. It's funny how both of the Sam Sam Reinhardt from Buffalo, who was relatively relatively disappointing, but not really, and Sam Bennett, who's very disappointing in Calgary. Both of them doing pretty well with the Florida Panthers thus far. 14 points for Sam Bennett. That's good for him. And 9 goals, yeah, because he was just rotting in Calgary. And it's not, it, it just wasn't a match. You know, it's not because Sam Bennett sucks necessarily. He's disappointing, yes. And it's not because Calgary's a bad organization. Though I'm sure Edmonton fans would say otherwise because they hate each other. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Sam Reinhardt, obviously, st- stepping up nicely, former Buffalo Sabre in Florida. And it's a good place. And good job by... Mr. Andrew Burnett obviously taking over the reins in a situation that could have gotten real ugly real fast when uh, the when Joel Quinville was uh, found to be involved. Well, he was basically the coach that did nothing during that whole unfortunate situation in Chicago. Simply look that up. I'm not going to get into that now. Anton Lundell, the guy that people compared to Miko Koivu coming into the draft via the, um, you know, in the Marco Rossi draft. We'll talk about Rossi in seg- and, uh, later this segment or like the Segment 2.5, you can call it, with the prospects. He's off to an okay start to his career. Between 24 games, 5 goals, 7 assists. So uh, so that's nice to see him back in the NHL. Joe Thornton, he's cup chasing. He's ring chasing. He's in Florida. Good for him. Well, Joe, maybe, maybe. You know, <laughs> going for that warmer climate now. Well, he was in a warm climate most of his career with the Sharks. Zach Dulp. Zach Dulp. Wow, former Minnesota Wild. That's a blast from the past. Zach Dahl played one game for the Florida Panthers, Florida. The reason why I'm saying it with that accent, it's New Yorkers that moved to Florida. Yeah, when, you know, happens a lot. That's why you're here. I'm from, I, I'm coming from Florida. It's like, yeah, you're not from Florida. <laughs> Heck, Mark, what's Michael Russo, by the way? You know, he, he, he was born in New York and moved to Florida, so he's got a little bit of that going on too. <laughs> Florida's a damn good team. Obviously, they kicked their well, they didn't really kick our butts, but it was a, you know not the best, not the best day for the Minnesota Wild. This is Saturday, the 18th of December, as we had close closure to Christmas. This is again in Excel Energy Center. Sam Bennett, COVID protocol. Oh yeah, so they're going through that too. I apologize. Uh, Brandon Montour, COVID protocol. Carter Verhege, uh COVID protocol. So. Hopefully this isn't a situation coming up again where we have another postponement. But, uh, yep, no, there was no postponement. I'm looking at the Carolina game. I was, I'm was i going to back uh, backwards here. I actually didn't look at Buffalo's uh, recent games. I apologize. I'll go back to that. I always do that. Buffalo, yeah, one, one and four. Maybe that's why <laughs> in their last five games. 6-2 loss to Carolina at Carolina. 2 to nothing loss versus John Gibson and the Anaheim Ducks at home. Uh, uh, two to one loss versus the Rangers, three to two loss versus Washington, and in, in Winnipeg, Buffalo ended their losing streak. Okay, let's get to Florida. Sorry for the mess here. I'm just goofy, too excited to talk hockey, and I don't even look at some of this extra stuff here. Florida's two and three in their last five. They haven't been super hot. Uh, four to three victory versus St. Louis, and then went to St. Louis, lost four to three. Okay, uh, won in Arizona, three to one, lost in Colorado, three to two, and got demolished by the Ottawa Senators. Demolished by the Ottawa Senators. Okay. All right. Um, I, I guess. Wow. Uh, hopefully the Wild can pull that off coming up. Hopefully the Wild can do something like that. Have a hat trick by Kaprizov or something. That'd be fun. Kaprizov will score for Minnesota. <sighs> yeah. I think the Wild beat Florida. I think the Wild beat Florida. Yeah, they might be going through a little tough time right now. And again, I hopefully this Hopefully this isn't a postponed game. We'll find out. Maybe not. Maybe they caught this thing. Uh, you know, yeah, quarantined it, so to speak, so we don't have to shut the whole world down again. And uh, the Florida Panthers will not beat the Wild. It's going to be a final score. You know, in, in hockey, you can't get too dramatic. I mean, it, it can get repetitive. It can get repetitive at times. I think the Wild win 
with an empty netter from a Brodeen or something like that. I, I could see Brodeen getting an empty netter, but the most likely guy to score in this game will be it's going to be uh, Kirill Kaprizov. Yeah, Kirill Kaprizov. The Wild win 5-3 with an empty netter. Dallas Stars on Monday, and then the next game after that's Detroit. We'll preview that next week as we head into Christmas weekend. Yes, sir. It's a weekend this year. Dallas Stars. Dallas Stars. Sorry, Rick Bonus, for saying you would be the first to go. It was a Vancouver coach, and I should have said that. I remember when uh, Derek Felska asked that a few shows ago, a few weeks back. Joey Joey. That was really poor. Uh, a really poor analogy on my part. Uh, Braden Holdby's had a nice little renaissance this year, kind of like Jonathan Quick. 2.39 goals against average, and Jake Etting Ettinger, who's who's had a couple of injuries at times, but he's been really good. Uh, uh, he's been really good for Dallas. He is the goalie of the future. 1.88 goals against average. Save percentage almost 94. 5-2 and two on the season. He's been great. Uh, and there's a familiar defenseman on the roster. I'll talk about him in a minute. Eh, yeah. Well, Looks like Jake the goalie's okay. Rudola, uh, Rad Radulov, pardon me, who had been killed the go uh, wild in the past. Joel Kirkaranta, upper body injury on the 13th. Illness for Radulov on the 13th of December. And Roop hints illness as of December the 11th. Radulov, definitely the biggest name there. Well, we'll play Dallas on the 20th, uh, obviously the 20th, kind of coming up here this uh, Monday. Not next Monday, March the sixth and April fourteenth. Dallas is one and four in their last five. They beat Arizona like everybody does, four to one. At Vegas, a loss, five to four. At LA, four to nothing. Wow, what's up with the Kings? At San Jose, two to one loss, and hosting the St. Louis Blues, four to one loss. St. Louis is looking great again this year. Unfortunately for us, Dallas Stars fourth in the power play, thirty eleventh uh, in the penalty kill. Fifth in penalty minutes, good discipline, shooting percentage not nearly on the Wilds uh, level. Goals against seventh because obviously good goaltending in Dallas. Uh, Hudobin certainly the glory days of getting to the uh, Cup Finals uh, like a year and a half ago now. Definitely uh, not the same guy, unfortunately, for for him. But uh, obviously nice little run. Joe Pavosky's had some huge goals down the stretch, some game winners. Roop. Hints is actually leading the club in goal scoring. Good for him, but he's out for a little bit here. Jason Robertson, obviously the uh, rookie of the year runner-up, tied with Pavoski for the lead in scoring. And he's missed six games this year. Ryan Suter. Ryan, I'm going to play every minute Suter. I'm going to play the minutes I want, and yet there's nothing you can do about it. My yo, Suter, with 14 points, 3 goals, and 11 assists on the season. Obviously, he's got Ryan Suter-like numbers. He's still playing like Ryan Suter, and he's still demanding the minutes, And but he certainly doesn't have the same power that he did here, because him and the owner aren't necessarily best friends like they were in Minnesota. So, yeah, the locker room lawyer, I'm sure he's still the same kind of guy, but not as bad there, because he can't be. Um, but Dallas hasn't exactly set the world on fire either. Jason Robertson, nice player. Heck, he's a point-of-game guy. He's, he's damn good. He's going to have a hell of a career. But Kirill Kaprizov is going to be a little better from what you can tell at the end of the day. Just didn't have a spectacular week. Minnesota, I think this is a loss. When the, uh, Dallas is one of those funny teams. I just think this is going to be one of those low-scoring, 2-1 to one type of games like the Los Angeles Kings. That's what this feels like to me. Most likely guy to score for Minnesota, Alex Goligoski. Alex Goligoski will score against his former club, but the Wild did not win. A 2-1 to one loss in Dallas. Uh, they have a tough... They, uh, they have great goaltending. Holtby's been good all year, and Ottinger's been good as well. He's got a nice future. Uh, if Hudobin's in that, you better take advantage of it, but we'll see, because he's not had a good year. I don't think it's going to be Anton Hudobin. Uh, it's probably going to be Holtby, but we'll see. Dallas wins 2-1 to one over, the, uh, over the Minnesota Wild. Let's check out the prospects now. And as per usual, we open things up with the Iowa Wild because they're the closest thing to Minnesota, per se, figuratively and literally. <laughs> the Iowa Wild haven't been as good lately. Uh, Joseph Cramarosa has really been stepping up. He's had some good games. Mason Shaw's back there. Nick Sweeney's had some multi-point games or some multiple games in a row with points, we'll say. Kaitlin Addison's still stuck at only seven points in the 16 games he's played now. 
Of course, they don't play a whole lot. Obviously, Joe Hicketts continues to factor in the scoring like almost every night. Rossi's down to a point a game, which sounds funny, but it's still dominating. Kyle Rao, Rossi, and Joe Hicketts all leading the club in scoring. And Nick Sweeney, it's a four-way log jam leading the club in scoring. Nick Sweeney's got the most goals. He's been very solid the past two weeks. Matt Boldy, again, ankle injury is the other one. Not as serious, and he's at a point a game in the seven games he's been able to play. But that's freaking unfortunate, thinking that he's been hurt. Hunter Jones is kind of all over the place. He'll have some good games. He'll have some not-so-good games. Uh, he's, he's super duper young though, so obviously it's just kind of let him develop. Derek Barabo, he, he was better earlier. I don't know what happened to him. It seems like he's taking a step back this year. He was better last year, Derek Barabo. Um, so I don't know what to say. Three, three, ten goals against average. That's not going to get you to the NHL. Andrew Hammond, obviously an AHL legend, and of course had that wonderful run in Ottawa uh, a couple of years ago. That was a lot of fun. It was enjoyable. That was when uh, Minnesota was on fire and and Andrew Hammond was on fire. It was it was fun. It was enjoyable, but you know, obviously t- things like that don't last very long. It's a magic carpet ride, as they say. Hovenov's been playing. Hovenov's been playing. He had a goal two weeks ago and hasn't done anything since. In the, uh, scoring category again, 21 years of age, so there's still a chance, obviously, that there's something there. He, yeah, I pray he's not another Dmitry Sokolov, and if he is, he is, I guess. Um, obviously Marco Rossi, at least he's playing and he's factoring. It's all about timing with him, and then he'll be an NHL player before you know it. I think next year Marco Rossi skates for the Wild, but this year, again, he can continue to do fantastic in the AHL. Great future for him. Uh, for him. Beckman, 11 points now on the season. Connor DeWeer, he's been dropping off a bit. And Damien Giroux is now at 22 games and still at 4 points for Damien Giroux, who was one of the leading scorers last year for the Iowa Wild. He wasn't way up there, but he was one of the best players in the Iowa Wild last year. And Damien Giroux has fallen up the face of the earth. The Sudbury, Ontario native, 21 years of age. And Connor DeWeer, uh, actually, no, he's his scoring is <laughs> he's, his, he's he's been missing games, unfortunately. That's what's been going on with Connor DeWer. Uh, he was called up for a minute, too, with Minnesota, but didn't factor out there. Um, Connor DeWer, again, missing some time. So it's it's been hurting. Uh, some of their valuable pieces have been missing. Obviously, again, no Boldy. DeWer has been out, and that, it makes a difference. Believe me, it does. Uh, especially to were in terms of the all situation deal, where then Boldy the dominant scoring possibilities for the Iowa Wild. They're not, yeah, it's not been a good, not been a good couple weeks for Iowa. The other Iowa club, let's go to them right away. Might as well just jump right to them, if humanly possible. The name to go to is Bryce Miz Misley. <laughs> the Iowa Heartlanders just, you know, it's not been good. <laughs> it's not been good at all. But Bryce Misley, second on the club in scoring, five goals, nine assists. For 14 total points, again, from Calgary, Alberta, and, of course, the University of Vermont, but he's a minus 15 on the year. Of course, the whole damn team is a minus 100, it feels like. Hovanov did have eight, uh, had, had six points in eight games when he was there, but, again, called up to the AHL. Goaltending's been a frustration. Uh, Trevin Koz- Kozlowski and Hunter Jones both had about four goals a game. And they've both been in 11 games, and just save percentages hovering around 90 or below, about 89 on average. Not been good. It's been a frustration. They've been losing just about every freaking game. Uh, can't be can't be good for the ego or anything like that for any of the guys on the roster. Um, Bryce Misley, the main prospect outside of Hunter Jones in the ECHLs, Iowa Heartlanders, the Iowa Heartlanders. Yes. So yeah, I'll continue from there. Obviously, Lodney is gone. Looked at this guy. Looked at that guy. Jacob Golden has two points now for McGill University. I, I think he's still property with Minnesota, but uh, yeah, it's a uh, McGill University in. <laughs> See, he's in college in Canada at the moment. Interesting. Um, two points, one goal, one assist in seven games for Jacob Golden. Of course, that's going back a ways to uh, Nick Sweeney's year, along with Mason Shaw and such. Sam Hent is still stuck at the five games. He hasn't been playing. Unfortunately, he's been hurt. Jack McBain for the University of Boston. Well, Boston College, anyway. 16 games, 20 points. Nine of them goals, 11 assists for the senior now. The big, giant, six-foot-four center 
of Boston College. Obviously, he's had uh, a heck of a year thus far. Nikita Nesterenko, Boston College. He keeps getting a little bit better. 16 games now, 13 points total, 5 of them goals. He is a plus 8. Good for him. Nikita Nesterenko playing on the second line for Boston College. Marshall Warren, Boston College, Boston, 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 Boston. Yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> Eight points, 15 and 15 games, three of them goals for him. He is a plus six. Not as dominant as he was a few years ago with a plus 22, but the team isn't as uh, crazy good as it was a couple of years ago when they were a national contender. But still, still a good team. And Paul Fenton picked some good players, I, I do believe. It's just a, just, a, just a vibe, just a vibe I have about that. Vladislav, first off, 13, yeah, it's the same stuff. So, always kind of missing time and such. Actually, no, he did play two games. He was at 11. 13 games at 8 points. 5 goals, 3 assists for first off. He's kind of just middle of the road so far in college. He'll have his really good moments, and then he'll kind of cool off again. He's kind of a hot and cold type of guy. Uh, should I torture myself and look at Philip Lindbergh? Nah, let's go. Pavel Novak, let's get to juniors and uh, juniors and overseas. Pavel Novak, wow, wow. <laughs> 31 points in 24 games, 13 of them goals. He's a plus eight for the Kelowna Rockets of the Western Hockey League. Love Pavel Novak. He's just, he's he looks like a really nice fifth round pick for Minnesota. As mentioned, Marit Huznadinov, he's at the 11 points in the KHL. He's not going to dominate in the KHL at his young age, but uh, yep, he is now going to be signed through uh, 2024 for SKA. SKA in Russia. It was SKA Juniors, now it's the KHL. So, St. Petersburg SKA for Huznetinov. Obviously, a very promising prospect. Uh, long recovered from that injury, which is nice, the shoulder injury. Just like Delvin Cook, right? Well, his was probably a bit worse than Delvin Cook's, unfortunately. Yeah, Cook came right back in two weeks. Miracle, man. Um, 19 points for Ryan O'Rourke. Again, dominating those two Greyhounds. I think he's at least an AHL player. And obviously his profile is that of the Iowa Wild. He's, uh, has he played with the Iowa Wild all year last year and was pretty good. Uh, really love the guy's development. He's on almost a point a game for the Sioux Greyhounds who are all over the place. They have a good game. They have a not-so-good game. But Ryan O'Rourke has a fantastic future. 19 years of age, and again, 19 points already in 20 games. Can't wait to see him in the AHL and beyond. Damon Hunt, a lot of people love this guy, and I'm I'm in I'm on the list. Seventh, or excuse me, right shot defenseman for Moose Jaw Warriors. Uh, he's a plus three on the year. Definitely better than last year with a minus 12. Uh, he's right at last year's pace at the moment. Right about at last year's pace. He's got more goals, less assists, 16 points in 22 games. So interesting there but showing promise, of course, and he was red hot earlier. He's cooled off a bit in the scoring department of late. Jesper, well, yeah, if you can take a look at the whole draft class for this year. It doesn't matter if it's junior or overseas. Jesper Wallstedt dropping the goals against average a little bit now, which is great, as he'd missed a few games. 1.82 goals against average. Save percentage about 90, uh, 92.5. And he'll be playing for the World Juniors coming right up here. Really looking forward to that for Sweden, as a lot of people believe this guy's potential is off the charts. Obviously taken very high, 20th in the draft. And why the hell not? Because, you know, Hunter Jones, we don't know. Uh, Derek Barabo is just kind of a, you know, he's a dark horse candidate at best. Kapo Kakinen's Looks okay, but is he, a, you know, is he a franchise goaltender? I don't think so. I think he's a very good NHL goaltender, but is he franchise level? No. Um, you want to have a franchise guy and then a really good backup, which sounds about right. Or, you know, maybe Capo Kakinen becomes a franchise goalie. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. We'll just have to wait and see. Because whilst that, there is no guarantee with anybody, ever. There never is. I mean, what, what was it? Lafayette is like, like another whoever, you know, like Paul, uh, not Paul Coffey, but like, I can't even think of anyone now, uh, like a Yari Curry level or beyond, like way beyond, he's not there yet, it, it takes time, or they're just not as good, like Jack Hughes, I'm not blown away, eight million a year, so it's expensive, Carson Lambeau stuck at the same numbers as last week, but missing time, unfortunately, 19 games, 18 points, Jack Pert, who'd been picking it up of late for St. Cloud, Again, no games last week for him either. 10 points in twin and 12 games, pardon me. Kenyon Bankier. Yep, again, 21 points in 25 games for him. For the Kamloops Blazers, that's my favorite. It's one of my favorite WHL teams. I just love anything with, like, the Calgary Flame-type colors and such. Similar, anyway, and the logo. 
pretty cool. Camelons, Blazers, Kyle Masta, as I like to call him that, because it just comes off the tongue. The Red Deer Rebels, he's a plus 16. That's the number one stat for him, I got to think. Not putting up a ton of points, seven points overall, two of them goals in 29 games, but getting the job done thus far for the WHL, he is a right shot defenseman in the system. Right shot defenseman. Obviously, no need, no immediate help needed there because you got uh, Kalen Edison still developing in the AHL. And, you know, I got to think sooner or later something's got to give. Josh Pilar, Camelot's Blazers, absolutely one of my favorite prospects in the whole system with 31 total points, 11 of them goals. He's a plus 11 on the air. Ahead of last year's, actually right about at last year's chase. Interesting. He's about there, isn't he? And the plus minus is about the same, but I got to think he's going to pick it up again. He's he cooled off a bit after being red hot for a minute. And Nate Benoit, who's red hot, man. He's three total points. He had a point a week going, but he didn't get it this week. Oh, man. But he's a plus five on the season. Left shot, stay at home type of defenseman. We'll see what happens. Maybe he's a third pairing in the NHL someday. We'll see. Sixth round pick. You know, I mean, who knows? <laughs> U.S. Hockey League, Tri City Storm. Nate Benoit, Nate Benoit from Bow, New Hampshire. That's right, that's right. He's a U.S. native, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Philip Johansson. Well, that's kind of it's kind of game over. He signed there for many years as well. It's a similar situation, and he hasn't scored in forever. Philip Johansson. It's probably game over with that one. With Philip Johansson, he's signed long term now over in Sweden. Uh, Sweden so that's kind of how that goes. Simon Johansson, I don't see a whole lot of a future here either. He did get his 10th uh, assist. Finally got another point. 12 now uh, in 29 games for him. So, not sure what's going to happen with him either. That should wrap up the prospects. Let's get to fan interaction right after this. here on Brave the Wild, segment number three, fan interaction segment. I'll get to a couple of things here super fast. Apologize. The Vigit application, V-I-G-I-T, it's two different words. It is basically like fantasy betting. Highly recommended. It's a lot of fun. You can keep up with your betting skills, so to speak, without betting real money. That's the whole point. And you could actually win real prizes with it. Social media for sports bettors. You can post about your picks. See what others are saying about games. This is, of course, for Apple or Android devices. It's an application. Uh, Vigit Betting League's month-long betting competition to see who the best sports better is over the course of a month. Free-to-play sports, but pet free coins, win real prizes. There's also great information on the Vigit like line movement where the public is betting. So, again, pretty cool. Highly recommended. The referral, when they ask, is Paladino Live. It's all one word, and it will be in the show description. One final thing I also highly recommend, you get into the crypto market and join... Uh, crypto.com. It is an application as well for Android or Apple devices. It sounds like a website, but it's an application. Crypto, look that up. I will have a link in the show description. Uh, it, it shows that I referred you by using that link. So you use the link, shows that I referred you, and you get $25 put in your account after you show that somebody referred you. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. And that would help the show also because we would each get $25 would help this show Absolutely, because obviously I gotta, there's always need for improvement, believe me. There always is. Uh, happy with the new laptop, even though it's a it's kind of middle of the road, but it's a really good middle of the road laptop. Really appreciate it. It does a great job compared to the last one, which was below middle of the road. We'll leave it at that. At Brave the Wild, at Brave the Wild, we'll open up with a Philip Johansson conversation rather than jump into the BT, uh, hashtag BTW, and we'll get to that right after this. I figured we'll get to Derek Felska's tweet. Philip Johansson just signed with Frolunda <clears throat> through 2024. See, it's a little different situation than uh, who's not enough because he's a bit older. And, yeah, it's it's a number of years ago. 2018, he was drafted. So he's a bit older and had been a little more disappointing as well. Uh, he was saying, so I guess we can cross him off the hashtag Minnesota Wild prospect list. As a famous song once said, another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. Hey, hey, another one bites the dust. Okay, sorry. I just added that. So I guess the Wild were not the smartest people in the room. Eh, Lang? <laughs> uh, 
Ray Prubin, so we get a little response here, says one of the dumbest first round picks. At the time it happened, people in the hockey world were like, WTF. And yeah, I mean, a lot of us, I remember the, uh, the commentators like I posted which, uh, when I responded to Ray was, uh, yeah, they're like, he's a, he's a fourth defenseman at best, first round pick, huh. And then the next pick was Jack McBain several picks later because it was the third round. And people were like, nice pick by the Minnesota Wild. So Jack McBain, yeah, and he's, he was pretty slow out of the gate. He looks good now. MN Johan says, except this happens every year, just saying, don't think the captain of the Swedish under-18 team is ever that bad of a pick, except when people don't understand how you judge players that stay in Europe. Yeah, I mean, it's like you never know how they would have factored in the NHL. It's a good point. Uh, Ray, Ray responds with, except that pick at that spot was completely off the board. Everyone had him as a second-round pick, and even the player himself was totally surprised and said so. So there was no sugarcoating it. It was a terrible pick at the spot when they took him in the first round. Yep, I mean, I would call it a reach at least. Yeah, I would call it a reach at least. I, <laughs> I mean, Johan says, sure, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Never have argued that it wasn't a reach. But those who do pan out from time to time. Yep, oh yeah, of, of course there are ones that do pan out from time to time. So sometimes it's okay to reach. Unfortunately, that one just didn't didn't pan out, I guess. Um, that's, a, that's a bummer. It, it is what it is, though. It is what it is. I think both the GMs, since uh, Chuck Bletcher did a great job with the drafting for the most part. Why is this doing that? <laughs> it's kind of weird. Okay, I think it worked. I think it did. Yay! Yep, hashtag BTWMN. Yep, I wanted to get into that convo, and I'm glad I did. Uh, at least bring it to the show. Damn it. There it is. Okay, yep, and I'm glad I hashtag the uh, release of the shows now. That way I can keep up where I need to be. Yep, the most recent episode. Thank you very much for those of you that retweeted it. Let's see who did real quick. It doesn't say. Come on, man. <laughs> doesn't that just drive you crazy? I'll have to go back and check it out. I want to see who retweeted. Indy, Indy Angel by Ghost Squad. Thank you. <laughs> it might be just more of a uh, uh, an ad, but uh, Tane and uh, Tane Brown out of New Zealand and Vince Germano out of Australia, and also Derek Shaw quote tweeted it. Thank you very much, Derek Pelska. Really appreciate that. And of course, there were some issues last week where the feed meshed with the previous episode, which was really annoying. I don't know if it's something I did wrong, possibly, and maybe HipCast, that's who I uh, post my shows with, is HipCast. Uh, so something funny happened, but I'm guessing you got the show, those of you that care got the show, and uh, yeah, the, the, you got the show, and everything's okay. So if there's ever an issue, let me know out there. Uh, again, like, what the heck? You said the show's out, it's not posting, or it's coming up with the wrong title. Like, what the heck? It was kind of weird. It matched with the previous episode. I don't understand technology sometimes. It's really weird. Derek Felska says, got a question? Just tag your questions, hashtag BGW, and fire away. And yes, thank you always, Derek. I always appreciate it. Always appreciate it. And I mean that with full sincerity. Looks like there's a couple of replies. Yep, yeah, because yeah, they're not hashtag, or well, one of them is. Brian Herrera said, where would you rank this wild team with other wild teams that we've fielded in the past? Right now, I'd say number one. I'd say this is probably the best Minnesota wild team. The other, well, I mean, obviously we've had some successful teams. Didn't we have a team that was like, what did they get, 104? Or was it 106 or something? It was a, a lot of points, 104 points back in 06, 07. And then they got their butts kicked by Anaheim. It was so disappointing. But Anaheim did win the Stanley Cup that year. So it was just freaking disappointing. We didn't even win the division because I forget. It was a Colorado. It was super good that year. or was it, it couldn't have been Chicago. They were bad. That's when they got Patrick Kane. And, uh, yeah, Patrick Kane, number one overall in the draft. You have to suck pretty bad to have that pick. Uh, and they didn't suck much longer. Um, this one's number one. Number two, it's just, you know, my feelings of that team, the first the first year Boudreaux was here, is so different now because of the more and more truth that came out with Spur, uh, Spurgeon, with Suter and Barisi. I, I just don't feel the same in Dubnik. Dubnik, it didn't take long to start noticing. He's got a little selfish vibe and kind of an attitude. Uh, Suter Parisi, you just knew something wasn't right. But what is it? What is it that's not working? And then... Uh, you know, more and more truth started coming out, and Bill Guerin was like, "What? what is it that's not working? And he saw it too. 
and uh, put the kibosh on it. This one's number one. Number two would be the Boudreaux's uh, first year here. It is, yeah, it was better. And then number three was the Gabrick Dimitra year, obviously, of uh, 06 07, with Nicholas Backstrom winning the uh, goalie of the year, basically. He was absolutely great. Jay Bushy, I think. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get this in the other feed. Yeah, because it actually shows hashtag BTW, man. So, yeah, I'll still catch that one for sure on the way up. And if not, I'll backtrack. Derek Felsica says the Iowa Wild are currently on a seven. Yeah, they've been terrible. Seven game losing streak, possibly going to eight games. What do they need to fix to turn around their fortunes? For one, they need to get healthier, obviously. Oh, man. It's it's hard to it's hard to even pinpoint it. Um, better goaltending would be nice. It, I don't know. I mean, it, they just seem kind of sloppy as well. Sloppy, like they just need to be more focused. I would say um, <laughs> you, you could go in a lot of directions with that one for sure. And I'm sure you. I mean, your knowledge about uh, I Wild might be even uh, might be even greater than mine, obviously, because Derek really does follow closely with the prospects. He's outstanding. Like I've said in the past, that one might be a fun show, like a one big long segment talking about those two where we just do that sometime. Um, time permitting, which is just doesn't permit like it like we'd like to with the different schedules and all that at times. Um, they've been sloppy. Obviously getting guys healthy would make a big difference. Uh, like the loss of, uh, like uh, the fact that uh, DeWare has not been out there lately is not helping. But again, more consistent play, this and that. Better goaltending is a huge thing right now down there. Uh, just generally, their defense has not been good, and the goaltending has not been good. Um, they've been giving up a lot of goals, plain and simple. Derek says, oh, here we go. Yep. And this one's similar to, I think this, it looks just like, it looks exactly like Jay Bushy's comment. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he copied it. I don't know. Or is it, or is it similar? Maybe they have a similar question. I apologize. I'm not accusing anybody of anything in a bad way. Derek says, should the NHL send players to China for the Olympics, or is it too big of a risk for teams possibly losing players for weeks due to quarantining? Who should make that choice, players or owners? Yeah, it's a similar question, but different. <sighs> Man, who should make the choice, players or owners? Mm. 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 I, th I wish they wouldn't, frankly. I, I wish they wouldn't. Not because I'm scared of COVID, but because of like it's your, like what you're saying. If it's a massive quarantine situation, weeks of quarantining, it could really mess things up, like majorly. I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth it. it and why? I don't, I don't want to say it. <laughs> I don't want to say it, but why that location? Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Olympics are fun. It's fun to watch. And if you win the gold, it's the most greatest thing ever. Of course, yeah. When's the last time we won the gold? 1980. <laughs> so, unfortunately, most of us don't remember it actually happening. Some of you out there might. Um, I was alive, but you get the idea. Yeah, I, I wish, I wish. It's. I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth it. It's fun. It's fun to watch and all that. But it seems to have more negative... There's more negatives than positives when you weigh the pros and cons, you know? It just uh, it just seems that way. M&M's with the advertisement, and I'm pro M&M's. I don't mean the damn stinger. Get get him out of here. or whatever. He's not a stinger. He's a schmuck. But, uh, yeah, the candy. Pardon me. Hate him with a passion. Um, let's get to Derek Velsio, Will Wild GM, and newly minted Team USA GM Bill Garrett. Give Ryan Suter a call to be on the U.S. Olympic team or Willie Katz of the veteran. <laughs> Hard pass, swipe left. <laughs> I don't know though. I mean, he's he's been he's been willing to get along with people. Obviously, him and uh, Eric Stahl got along okay. Afterward, Miko Koivu massively. The Koivu is obviously a huge part of the history of the team. And yes, me and Derek don't uh, agree with the majority of the fan base of how like Koivu is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I, I don't think he was. I, I don't. Uh, Jay Bushy says, what's your thoughts on the NHL player participation in the Olympics with the COVID-19 protocol set up by Chinese laws? If I'm a player, I'm not participating, and as an owner, I don't want my players to play. I'm leaning on Jay Bushy's side, yes. I am strongly leaning on your side, Jay. Strongly. Um, it's mostly the rules and that, all that. It's not the, I'm not the, oh my God, COVID type. I'm just not. I'm the, 
I'm the I'm I'm the <laughs> the restrictions are going to ruin everything, ruin, ruin teams and players' seasons. That's where I see it. So I'm definitely on your side on that, Jay. Uh, and I, I, th I think a lot of us, uh, I think a lot of people agree it's not worth it. Um, here's Derek. Uh, with more and more players going on COVID protocol, what are the chances the league shuts down for seven to ten days just to get it under control so they don't have to keep postponing games? It's increasing. Oh, God, I hope that doesn't lead to that. It's increasing, though, and we all know, you know, you know obviously people are a lot scared of it than I am. And, yeah, and it's possible. Again, I guess more and more reason to not go to to not go to China at all. More and more reason to not go to China. Let's just leave it at that. But it's increasing. <sighs> let's say like one. Uh, let's say thirty-five mm, percent chance. Because I'm guessing that's like one of the last resort type things. Okay. Hashtag. Okay. Yep. Uh, oh. Okay. And then Derek shared what Brian had uh, said. Yeah. Because it didn't have the hashtag in it. That's why. Thank you, Derek, for that. Yeah, that was when uh, Ryan, uh, Brian Herrera was asking about who, uh, who, who's the highest ranking NHL team in the past, or this team versus them. This one's number one for me because of guys like Ryan Hartman, Marcus Foligno, and of course at the top with Eric Sinek, of course, or excuse me, Eric Sinek, at the top with uh, uh, Kirill Kaprizov, guys like that. And just, you know, look, Zuccarello, like what a valuable piece, man. He is so much better than that uh, than the guy we had the first year with the the wrist that hadn't really healed properly. What a difference! And of course, when you're the kind of stick handler and you angle the puck the way you need to to make the passing skills that he has, if you have a bleeped up wrist, it's not gonna be, you're not gonna be the same player. In fact, not even close. I can relate. My wrist has been chronically you know it's been through chronic aching for 23 years. I can relate. Let's just leave it at that. Zach, uh, Derek says, does Zach Parisi's lack of scoring with the Islanders freely, freely vindicate the Wild's decision to buy him out? Hell yes. Uh, I think so. You know, obviously the cap hit sucks. But the cap hit was going to be there anyway. And you have him in the locker room demanding to play, basically, or being pissed off that he's not playing, or this or that. And then Ryan Suter being what Ryan Suter is. Let's just leave, you know, most of you, I think you get it by now. Some of you still don't. A lot of the people on message boards, I think that's why I've lost some followers. <laughs> There was a, a there was a little group of people that left the last couple of weeks because they're probably more of the fanboy Koivu and Studer and you know we're in first place we're in first place I can't stop looking at it we're in first place we're in first place we're in first place we're in first place we were in first place in sixteen seventeen too I mean need I say more it, it, it's December y'all it's December y'all I don't know why I'm saying y'all it's December though <laughs> so. Hell yes, it was uh, absolutely a good reason to buy him out. He can't, he he, he can't play anymore. He, he okay, there we go. I, I I hope I didn't offend the <laughs> the the fanboys out there. He can't play anymore. Zach Barisi can't play anymore. That's just an unfortunate fact. Final thing. I guess that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's the end of the hashtags. Ah, is there any other? I'll look for your notifications real fast. Oh, yeah, Declan Goff. So, but that's Timberwolves related. Um, it's fun, though. Nikola Jokic, NBA MVP last year, of all things. And, of course, picked one pick before, uh, one pick behind the Minnesota North, uh, Timberwolves. Took Glenn Robinson the third, who's just a role player at best. Nikola Jokic went one pick later. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it, around here with yeah, Braden Point and freaking, uh, what was his name? I already forgot his name now. Probably because I wanted to, right? <laughs> uh, get back to him. I, uh, he's here. I'll get it. I'll get it. I don't want to say his name now. Gosh, is that long ago? Where is it? <laughs> I'm blanking. I don't even want to remember now. It's such a painful thing. Uh, Louis Belpedio. That's what it was. The Wild traded with uh, traded uh, down one pick, so. The Tampa Bay Lightning could take Braden Point. It's just, need I say more? It's just kind of similar. The North Star, or the Timberwolves didn't make a trade, but yeah, they passed in Nikola Jokic for Glenn Robinson the third. Yeah. yeah. Name recognition, baby. See where it gets you? See where it gets you? Just like Ryan Sund? Okay, yeah. Stuff like that. But uh, what happened was Phil Mackey predicted that Nikola Jokic would get a triple double and the Wolves would still win in Denver, and yeah, boom. Long story short, finally. 
<laughs> Sorry for babbling so much. But with that said, it wasn't that long of a show, though. Reasonably medium-ish. <laughs> with that said, hopefully Minnesota can continue to get in the uh, the winning ways again. Uh, obviously, a couple of uh, hiccups with Los Angeles. No legs, and then Vegas was just freaking better. They were damn good. Jonas Burdine will be back in the lineup. He was noticeably missing versus the... Uh, Vegas Golden Knights, he would have made a big difference, I think, versus a Jordy Ben. Uh, that's just a fact. He is the best skater defenseman on the wild. Him and Dumba are just unbelievable at skating. And so is Goligoski. And so is Spur- Yeah, so that's the big four. When they're all together, they're great. They're great. Uh, Goligoski's a better skater than the Dallas Stars uh, guy. The Dallas Stars guy who likes minutes. That guy. Um, and then the uh, New York Islanders guy who can't score anymore. He's a better skater than him, too. <laughs> Brandon DeHaime is slightly better than that guy, isn't he? A little better. I think Brandon DeHaime took his job, basically. Think about that. That's a big deal. That's a big upgrade, honestly. No offense, but it's a big freaking upgrade. Um, hope all of you enjoy the show. Please tell your friends about it. Would appreciate it so much. Please uh, write a positive rating on iTunes, uh, Audible, or Stitcher if you could. I greatly appreciate it. And those of you that have, thank you so much. Rusty McCrusty was the most recent one. Thank you so much. Um, other than that, please call into the show sometime. Audio submission. You're more than welcome to do it. Open your smart device. There's free voice recording applications on every smart device on the planet. Open it up. Uh, press record. Talk into it like a phone call. You can use your earbuds or whatever the heck it is. Whatever it is, it's just the, st- the audio should be just fine. Uh, talk into it three to five minutes, whatever. Heck, even if it's 30 seconds, if you don't really have a whole lot to say, maybe a quick thing. And you could go on for a bit, too, if you want. Um, and then save it and share it slash email it to paladinolive at yahoo.com, paladinolive at yahoo.com. I would then convert it into an MP3 file. Thanks to zumzar.com, who gives me a free service with that way, so I'm more than happy to give them a free plug for converting files. With that said, hope you all have a wonderful week. You hope all of you have a wonderful week, and keep enjoying your Christmas and holiday seasons. Uh, Go check out the Christmas lights and go wild. Mm